When I was a child, once in a blue moon, my mother would take down from the top shelf of her wardrobe a battered black box. This shelf was always enticing to me, jammed as it was with tins of snapshots, shoeboxes of letters, and best of all, my mother's old nursing texts. These were hefty tomes from the 1950s, their hard, plain covers giving no hint of the freak show inside. Here were ulcerated legs, clubbed fingers, aorta sprouting something called vegetation. The midwifery text was heart-stopping. Inside were garish placentas slopping in pans, and shriveled infants, multi-headed infants, infants labelled cretin. I would pore over these books, and then I'd look at her, this woman who was my ordinary mother, yet was also somehow connected to these horrors. I struggled to make sense of her past of love letters and misshapen limbs, couldn't reconcile it to her life with us in Box Hill, the weatherboard house, the endless stream of offspring. The contents of the black box only enhanced the mystery of who she was. Indeed, inside the box lurked the most disquieting aspect of all. Inside was a slide projector. Occasionally, when the mood took her, Mum would close off the hallway, assemble the projector, and focus its one beam on the toilet door. She had travelled alone through Europe in her 20s, something which was relatively unusual for a young woman in the early 60s to do. Out of the dimness would shine images of a youthful version of her, lean and jazzy in cream pants and sleeveless shirts, against the backdrop of a world we could only trust had been true. 1964 Europe, as projected on the toilet door, was a place of pink stone and blue sky, a clean, calm place, soft at the edges. I remember no crowds, just a few upright pedestrians, and occasionally some curiously shaped cars. Posed in the centre of each scene would be our mother, atop the Eiffel Tower, feeding pigeons in St Mark's, smiling beneath a London billboard advertising a hard day's night. Hunkered in the hall, we would see through her memory in the eye of her camera the Arc de Triomphe, the bullfight, the farmhouse of our dire Irish relatives. We'd thrill to the tale of the Egyptian camellia who wouldn't let her off the camel until she'd paid more money. But we were always waiting for one slide in particular, a bay of sapphire water, a curve of bleached stone. Greece, a country forever coloured in my mind by the crime my mother committed there. Tell the story, we would beg, and she'd evade a moment, then tell it again. Something, heat or boredom or maybe a traveller's loneliness, possessed her to go to the movies one night in Athens. Even as a child, I thought this foolhardy. Anything could happen to a lone young lady at night, and that night, to my mother, something did. Not long after the movie started, a man settled into the seat beside her. For a time, he behaved himself, quietly watching the film. Then, inevitably, his hand began to creep. It crept out of his lap and onto my mother's thigh. Once there, it commenced to stroke seductively. What did you do, we goggle-eyed kids would ask, more than a decade later. Our mother's reply was always the same. Rather than shift to another seat, She'd reach to her hat, remove the three-inch-long pin from its brim, and, in one swift and surgically precise movement, driven it into the gentleman's leg. <laughs> we children would reel. Our mum had stabbed someone. <laughs> we had a mother who had stabbed someone. I could never decide how I felt about this. On the one hand, I was impressed. On the other, it was unnerving to be in the dark with such a woman. If she could stab a Greek man as naturally as plucking a flower, what could she do to us, we horde who drove her mad? <laughs> what happened, we'd ask. What happened after he stabbed him? Apparently, he'd merely risen from his seat and limped off without a word. <laughs> without a word, we'd splutter. Without a word, Mum confirmed. Limped off to die, proposed my sister. <laughs> he should have kept his hands to himself, said Mum. I love that story. It settled deep in my mind alongside, alongside aortic vegetation. <laughs> Looking at my placid mother, I understood that the world has many faces and is not always what it seems. When I told her I would tell tonight the story of Greece and the hat pin, my 71-year-old mother squawked. Say it was somebody else, don't say it was me. <laughs> then, perhaps remembering who she was, she smiled a kindly old lady's smile and said, 
He's probably dead now anyway. 